Hello everyone, Sonia here from Sonia's Mixed Media and um, today I'm going to show you my watercolour journal I've started uh, that I mentioned in my last video and also my sketch journal that I've been working in. So I thought I'd give you some progress updates of what I've been up to lately. Uh, so first of all, you may have seen in my last video I was making this... Um, paper to look like leather uh, from shoe polish and I said that I was going to make a journal cover and so I did this is my journal cover and this is the inside I just lined it with some normal scrapbook paper to make it pretty on the inside and the cover is actually made from um, just a um, glossy magazine that had like a firm cardboard uh, cover and I just kind of carefully peeled the cover off of the spine of the magazine and then cut it to size and used that as my base and then I made my my leather look paper and then stuck it all together and then I uh, got my watercolor and I sewed in my signatures and then I used a really strong glue uh, that costs a lot of money that my <laughs> my husband has it's in a really small bottle it's called lock tight and I just glue that on the knots and down here just to secure it so that that paper like the holes don't become any bigger it's not really neat and tidy I'm not much of a book binder but it does the job I just want to say with my leather look um, paper tutorial that I did the other week I couldn't wait of course so I decided to dry mine with a heat gun which did work I mean it dried it perfectly and as you can see look I'll rub 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 and there is no polish coming off so in that sense it's really good but it actually took away the feel of it being leather it's just dried and it actually does feel like paper so I'm not sure what happened there but somehow the the heat from the heat gun has made it dry all up completely and so it's now like paper again but it's I mean it still looks like like old leather but it just doesn't have the feeling I've got two other pe pieces that I've left in my craft room that um, I haven't dried with the heat gun and they still feel like leather so I think what I'm saying is <laughs> my tip for you is just like they've been drying for like days and days now it does take a long time especially in winter if it's summer you can put them outside and it'll probably take two or three days to dry but mine have been drying like almost a week because you know they're in my craft room and um, it's winter over here so they're taking ages to dry but they are drying slowly but they still have that leather feel to them so yeah so that's just a tip for you try to let them dry naturally don't be tempted to get the heat gun unless you know you don't mind it feeling like paper again you could probably put like a gloss um, sealer or something which might be a good idea to put over this if you do use a heat gun um, to protect it a bit totally up to you but I just wanted to mention that it did seem to make a difference okay so onto this really excited to show you this this is my watercolor journal and I have been doing a lot of tutorials on YouTube because I haven't used watercolor for oh I think about two years now so I'm really really rusty and watercolor if you've ever used it before is a bit of a beast to control you it really takes a knack to do watercolor it's one of those things that I eventually get when I practice and practice and practice for months I eventually get the hang of it but then when I stop and then I go back to it like like in this case a couple years later it's like oh my god I don't know how to use this again this is so hard how much water do I use is this too much water is it too wet is it too dry yeah, it's like a really hard beast to tame. So um, I've had to go back through doing tutorials. And so this journal is all about learning techniques and um, 
you're writing down things that I need to do or what I did or what I didn't do, um, who the tutorial was by. Um, yeah, things like that. So this was a little landscape I did. It was a tutorial on YouTube. Most of these are. And uh, this was my first um, painting that I did. And yeah, it didn't turn out very good. If you see what the artist on YouTube did, it was much, much, much better. And I did a lot of things wrong. But this is my learning journal. So I've written down kind of some things about it. Like I wrote that the tone of this painting is blah and... You know, I could write a hundred more things now that I look at it um, to see what went wrong. Uh, this is another tutorial I did. This is from the person who actually gave me this idea to do the journal like this as a learning journal. And uh, I'm not sure how you say her name, but I think it's We or Way Talendia. Talendia. And she's on YouTube. She has this gorgeous a watercolor journal and it's full of roses and flowers and she says it's her learning you know journal as well but she is amazing at it but she was doing this tutorial of a rose so I um, went along with uh, her while she was painting that so and I was just trying out a few different uh, yellow colors that I had and um, decide to go with this one so um, the majority of the rose is like this color then here I had really good fun practicing I wanted to practice how to do watercolor people when you do a big landscape and then you have um, like these small little people in the distance or in the crowd and I wanted to know how to do loose watercolour people without sketching them first. So um, had fun with that doing different ones. So these top ones were all kind of in the tutorial and then these last four I made up myself. So I really like this one here. I think that's good, but um, this is the first two I did and I like those as well. Uh, another tutorial that I found was negative painting. I really love this technique and this one was copied by the tutorial exactly like this and I love, I love the two people in this. I love the colours. I love how they look like they're having a conversation. Um, and then I did one by myself, um, but um, this was using a different tutorial uh, at the same time, but kind of made up my own. And this is two kids sitting on a, on a rug, just uh, looking out uh, into the distance. So you can see the side of this boy here, but this is supposed to be a little girl and that's the back of her head. So yeah, just practice that. Then again, went on to something different. So I wanted to practice loose style flowers, like wet on wet. So just doing that. A um, couple of landscapes, easy landscapes. I uh, can't remember the YouTuber who does these, but she does a lot of them. And these are easy three color landscapes. So. These are my three colours and then you can also mix up your own black colour as well um, and using these three colours and yeah, you get a nice landscape. Then I did this value uh, tone study um, by another, uh, this was by Alfonso Dunn, who is really great at art, all sorts of art tutorials, drawing, painting, everything. Um, so I did this flower from his tutorial, looking where light and shadows, uh, where they should be. And the different uh, tones you can get with the same colour. And... 
um, then this was a different tutorial about tone and I really love how this turned out because um, I realized after doing this looking at my old art a watercolor art journal I had no tonal values at all I was just painting colors <laughs> and this really made me see you've got to have at least you know four four different tones in your painting I think this has actually got five so and it's really I really like to have a really dark color um, for the trees really made this this picture pop then I did more of these um, I found my own pictures and I made more of these negative I guess yeah you call them negative um, paintings where you find it, it works best when you use people that have like white clothing on so I found this old man with his walking stick he was walking um, along the beach with his little dog and then I found this girl here she was just walking in the park uh, in her bikinis and this is actually my husband <laughs> playing golf and he's very hunched over because he is very very tall and the stick was very very short <laughs> so um, yeah this wasn't really negative painting but I did him first and then did the background and then yesterday I did um, this so some more quick sketches of people and then I did the watercolour background got a bit confused with that because the man was going so good on the tutorial like with the people and colouring the people and things like that he was doing that all step by step really slowly and then when it got to doing the background where the shops are and filling that colour in he put it all in like super speed and it was like oh like hang on a minute so yeah he just kind of went crazy so I uh, really didn't know how to do the background um and then the people didn't really pop out from my background because of the colors so i kind of just went back in and used my ink to sketch them out again and then this was another tonal study that i saw the differences in a painting um choosing what are your darks and what are your lights so this one has the um the light roof on this side and the light uh, pathway but this one has a dark pathway the darker roof um, we have the darker sky and hills in the distance this one has the lighter to start with so just differences in how like a painting looks I guess so I kind of did a bit of learning on that and then because I did some before I actually sewed them in um, I also worked on this technique here which is urban sketching and I don't know if I wrote no I didn't write who this was by but this was a really good technique what you do is you splash all the watercolor paint onto your page first um, knowing kind of what your picture looks like so I knew that there was going to be a sky over here and a building over here so I knew blue had to go here and the color of the building over here but you just kind of randomly splash paint on your page and then you go in and you draw um, your your building and things so that was a really fun technique because then I got bits of green and browns and and the peachy color in places that I would never normally have put them so I found that really fun um, again I've put um, I need to work on my tonal values this needs more tones so yeah I should have really made because this area here was darker uh, like in the shadows so I want to go back in and darken these windows you know I need to darken the door down here darken the brickwork I want to darken this lamp shade just put in a few more darks in here because it's all kind of the same tone so it's something I'm working on with that so that's my watercolor journal I'm working on at the moment and then I've also at night been doing some sketching in just my cheap little sketchbook here I think this this is a Montmartre which um, over here in Australia is a really cheap brand um, you can get in all the kind of cheaper shops um, I think this 
one was like yeah six dollars so um yeah i just use this to do my sketches so this here is some cat doodles because i've been doing a lot of the doggy doodles <laughs> which i've got a video on uh, but instead of using a piece of collaged paper i just drew random shapes so all the purple bits you can see is the shape that i drew and then i went and turned them into cats so um, i'm not really used to drawing cats so i thought i'd try that out but i kind of like how this one here turned out with these kind of his fish jacket on thought that looked kind of cute and I like this one with his big eye and he's really concentrating looking at something but I kind of did like a dog <laughs> dog tail you know like I said I'm not used to cats I'm still doing kind of dog tails on them um, but I find these useful if you are drawing some art and you go oh, I want to draw a cat but I don't know what pose to put it in I can go back and and look at these and go oh that's a good pose you know something that I wouldn't normally draw a cat as um, so here again just drawing some more cats um, these were off for of reference images um, just trying to get an idea of you know what a cat looks like um, I'm not around cats I don't have a cat <laughs> so I really have to look at reference pictures and then I found some cartoon character cats um, examples um, these are not my own these are examples off the internet that I thought were cute um, cat characters so just some inspiration if I wanted to make up my own cartoon cat really like these two uh, this here is a magazine image and I wanted to play with um, character so um, character is like when you emphasize details on a person's face so for this one I made her hair like really huge like a it is a bob cut but I made it like a really big bob cut I uh, emphasized her fringe flicking over um, the pointiness of her chin and the thinness of her neck um, I emphasized how big her mouth was um, this was all done in pen so it's really sketchy you can see you know I changed the width of her neck I made her nose really small you know just kind of practicing that sort of thing I like doing characters and things like that um, this one here I'll get that in frame there you go um, this was out of a magazine and she really appealed to me and the first thing I saw when I look at her is her lovely mouth of white teeth so that's the first thing that stuck out to me and then of course this lovely straw hat she has on so in my character I made sure I did her mouth with her big teeth first <laughs> made her nose extra long the poor thing um, and then I worked on this amazing hat so yeah just working on quick sketchy um, characters um, so I kind of really like that actually and then this guy here too is a favorite what I uh, saw about him was how pointy and sharp his his hairstyle is so I kind of really uh, emphasized that in the drawing and made his ear bigger and made his lovely mustache I made that you know quite big and um, then he seemed quite muscly up top so you know kind of sketched in big sort of arms and then thin legs to make him look quite muscular up top to what he seems um, but it's all drawn just straight with um, ink pen so there's no rubbing out or erasing so that's why it's very scribbly and you know trying to get these arms right and his ear right and things like that then this is <laughs> this is just um, some characters I saw online. I think it's called Draw My Draw, uh, draw or Paint Paint My Picture. It's a free um, site where people upload photos. And saw this <laughs> this lady um, on her um, oh, it's not a wheelchair. What are they called? These motorized um, scooter walker things um yeah i thought she was quite amusing with her big long pulled up socks 
and her cross tattoo. <laughs> this was just a little one that I, you know, practiced this face on. Um, these are very, um, if you've looked up Will Terrell, it's very inspired by him. I love him as an artist. Um, this is again a caricature. Um, this was out of a magazine and it's actually supposed to be Angelie Jolie's dad, I think it was. It doesn't look like him now because I've kind of, I've made his ears absolutely huge because old men have big ears and big noses, you know, they just do. So, you know, emphasised those, emphasised his kind of big chin and the deepness of his eyes. So I had to play with that. I'm not very good at colouring things. Then I was playing with seahorses. Um, this actually from the other page bled through because <clears throat> of the pens. But these were seahorses. So first I drew from reference a, uh, a proper seahorse. If you can see that. And then I drew a kind of cartoony type seahorse and added like a bridle. And then went full on, you know, cartoonish um, seahorse. So the three different styles there. Then <laughs> this man here, I don't know if people are interested in this, but you know, this is, I just want to show this sketchbook because you don't have to be this fantastic artist to have a sketchbook. It's all about playing. So that's why I wanted to show you, you know, I'm not great. So, you know, just have fun in your sketchbook. Uh, I don't show this sketchbook to anyone, but my my family like you know my my daughters and my husband that's the only ones that see this sketchbook oh and you guys <laughs> uh he was actually in a magazine advertising something and i thought he was hilarious he had this really spiky hair and um you know this big chin and he did have his lips like this so i just thought he'd be great for a character so really emphasise those lips, the chin, his nose, his hair. And then um, he actually did have written on his T-shirt, gun show. I thought it was hilarious. So, yeah. And then just some more characters I drew from reference photos. Um, this guy here, <laughs> he was at a like a fair or festival and he had bought something and he had this pirate hat on. And I just thought he was really hilarious looking. So I just did a character of him. And then this was just a picture of some feet. And I just thought it was funny. I didn't manage to capture it because I couldn't draw it properly. Like this foot here probably captures it um, a bit better. But this one, I couldn't do it. But the reason why I wanted to draw these was if you look at this foot, um, she actually had shoes on that were about two to three sizes too small for her and her feet were like hanging over the ends of her shoes and someone had taken a photo of them because they obviously have the same sense of humour as me and thought that was really funny. <laughs> so, um, yeah, kind of tried to draw that but it didn't really work. <laughs> then um, I just had this guy with his cowboy hat and just made a character out of his feet face which turned out really funny I think and I love his hat and then that's all I had but I I just made up a body and I accidentally did both of his legs like this so I thought what can I do oh no I'll put him on some skis <laughs> so he's a, a cowboy skiing so yeah there you go the skiing cowboy then this uh, old chap here I thought was lovely he was in a magazine and um, yeah just love the way he looked in his overalls loved his face emphasized his nose and his ears again I love that character type look so I was working on those absolutely ruined his hand it looks like a claw could not get that right and like I said I don't draw in pencil first so you know you get stuck with what you did then i was going down memory lane thinking about um uh i always forget his name um gregory 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 <laughs> i've forgotten <laughs> you know the guy i mentioned in my last video well not my last 
maybe not my last, but the one before. Uh, what's his name? Um, Gregory. Oh, I can't remember now, but he talks about drawing from life, drawing every day, sketching every day. And so this was just a few things from my lounge room. So things that I could see. So there was my pot plant, um, packet of rice snackers that my kids had left on the couch and my little scraggly dog who had a bad haircut. Um, she was um, sulking um, on, <laughs> on her blanket, her zigzag blanket. Uh, then we have some more kind of doodle animals. I didn't do a shape first this time. I just kind of doodled them. Just, yeah, some dogs and cats. Just try to work on those a bit. This looks absolutely messy. But what I was doing was I was testing different ink pens with my watercolours just to see if they bled and how they looked. So, um, yeah, you can see this one bled a lot. Um, this one was all right. This was using um, Indian ink. This was another pen. So just trying different pens to see what I would use. This one bled a little bit. Uh, again, just using, um, there is a technique, um, I saw this lovely artist, he actually used a felt tip marker pen to draw his drawings with, knowing that they will bleed, and then he comes up with these beautiful urban sketches. Uh, I've tried it a little bit, and it doesn't work for me, it turns out a big muddy mess, so, um, but I was trying that technique. And then I was doing these last night. I'm just trying to practice sketching people as fast as I can and trying to get the proportions right. I'm really bad at sketching people, but I came along this um, video that really, really helped me. And once I had watched that, um, it definitely helps me. Before, I've never been able to draw um, people like this I mean this is my first one he's not very good at all but um, I really improved with his video I can't remember who he was but um, what he did was he was talking about drawing a line um, down the center of the the shape of the body and then and then drawing around that finding out where the shoulders were and the waist was and then using that before you draw and it really 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 helps because I want to go in my car maybe today after work or tomorrow after work and I want to sketch some people in real life I'm going to sit in my car and see if I can see um, some people in town and sketch them because I really like doing that and then I'm going to add some watercolor to it so just been at home looking at reference images in magazines, just found a few and just try to draw them as quickly as I can. But drawing from life is so different. You've got to be really fast. So I'm just kind of going to practice my speed a bit. So that's all I have done. And that is my really messy and bad sketchbook. <laughs> and I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, I hope to keep you up to date. And I think I'm going to be playing it in my mini magazine playground journal as well uh, soon. Uh, Dee Dee's come out with a new video on that again. So I'll probably have a bit of a play in that and I'll um, see if I can upload a video. Uh, have a great week, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment. Okay, bye.